All right, folks. Hello. My name is Megan Rushing. I am so excited that you are all are joining us today. Um, this is the Residence Life uh, session, um, and it will be recorded. Um, so giving you all a chance to all roll in. Um, I am joined by Dr. Brandon Howard and uh, Karina Carpenter. So uh, we'll give a quick, quick second for folks to join and then uh, we'll get started. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. Okay, awesome. Thank you again for joining us today. My name is Megan Rushing, um, assistant, um, senior assistant director with Duke Admissions. Um, I am joined today by Dr. Brandon Howard, who's in uh, Residence Life, and also Karina Carpenter, who's in New Student Family Program. So thank you all. I also have a colleague in the background um, answering questions. You can use the Q&A feature um, at the bottom of your screen. Um, so Quick housekeeping, um, Duke encourages persons with disabilities to participate in its programs and activities. Um, if you would like to request accommodation services for an information session or this virtual session, please contact Idella Hackett at idellahackett at duke.edu. Um, her phone number is 919-684-0186. And we can arrange that at a later date. And then, uh, Brandon, can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, just a quick note, um, this session is being recorded and it will be available on our YouTube channel. Um, if you go to the Admitted Student Webinar playlist, um, you will find this in a few days. Um, so if you need to watch it again, or maybe share it with someone, you can absolutely do that. Um, and the recording link will also be in your Choose Duke portal. Um, so I'm going to hand it over um, to uh, Dr. Howard and, um, and Karina, and they are going to go through a um, couple of changes that we've implemented the past couple of years with our residential structure, which are really exciting and phenomenal. So I am going to hand it over to them. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Brandon Howard. I use he, him, his pronouns. Um, I am the campus dean for housing and residence life. So I oversee all of our first year housing at Duke University. Karina. And hi, everyone. My name is Karina Carpenter. I'm one of the associate directors for the Office of New Student and Family Programs, uh, which houses our orientation. Um, all of the communication that you guys will be having once you decide to come to Duke. Um, and then we also uh, support families through the four years as well. And I use she, her pronouns. And we are excited to have you all here this evening to talk to you a little bit about the living and learning environment at Duke um, and talk a little bit about experiential orientation and some of the great things that you can look forward to if and when you join us here at Duke University in August. So as Megan talked a little bit about um, our residence, our housing and residential model, and really our model for all of our students is based on Quad X. Um, our Quad X model is an inclusive living and learning model that builds upon the history, the values, and the spirit of Duke University. Uh, the goal of the Quad X is to deliver a transformative experiences by enhancing social, residential, and intellectual lives of all of our undergraduate students. Um, supporting a key pillar of Duke's strategic framework, QuadX provides the structure and resources needed to build upon strong campus communities, enable deep exploration of intellectual interest, and promote overall well-being and growth. So really, as Duke looks ahead to its, towards its second century of existence, um, this statement really outlines our vision and goals for living and learning at Duke University. But I'm going to go a little bit deeper into this. So what this really is, is our, we think about Quad X as a social, residential, and intellectually engagement 
uh, model that you get to, that really frames your four years here while you're at Duke. Um, these Quadex combines these three critical components to any college experience. And so um, we really wanna leverage these three components to make sure that your out of the classroom experience is as fulfilling and as uh, fruitful as possible. When we think about Quadex, we really believe it's not just about where you live, but how you're living at Duke University. So first, let's all talk about where you, where you live and talk about the residential structure of Quadex and really honing in on the places that you're going to live in the community that we hope that you'll build here when you join us at Duke University. So East Duke University is uh, Duke University is split residentially into two main areas. Um, the East Campus neighborhood, which is where all of our first year students start off their Duke journey. And then once they, once they complete their first year and they become sophomores, they'll spend their sophomore, junior and senior year in on the West Campus quads. Um, really, when we think about our quad X model, it really builds upon a residential and community link between the two campuses. So again, first year students will start living on East Campus, but then they will automatically belong to a, their connecting West Campus quad. Um, this is gonna be very important because it's important for special programming and helping first year students begin building those connections, not only with the other first year students that live in their residential community, but it also helps them begin building connections with upper class students as well. And the goal is really for first year students to feel at home in both locations. Um, this summer, you'll find out your first year residence hall assignment once you've completed your housing application. And you'll also find out the West Campus quad that you'll automatically be connected to once you become a sophomore. And while you might not always live in your quad, you'll always belong there. So students will have lifelong membership to their West Campus quad, even if they move out of that quad or even once after they graduate. So here's a, break, a breakdown of sort of how the different East Campus houses um, connect to the different West Campus quads. Um, because you're Duke students, you've probably already taken a look at our housing website and have found a little bit of this information. Um, but when we think about the East-West connections, there are two residence halls that are paired. Um, these are typically uh, geographically similarly located within East Campus, and they are automatically connected to one of the seven quads on West Campus. Um, there will be about 200 to 400 students on each in each East Campus neighborhood and about 400 students in the quads on West Campus. And so once you move over for your sophomore year, you will join about two to 400 other students uh, that are sophomore, uh, other rising sophomores, juniors and seniors. All of our seniors will live in one of these seven quads, again, based on your um, house, your first year on East Campus. And then once you move towards your junior and senior year, um, you'll, be able to choose, you'll be able to choose to continue living in your quad in, or in other upper class student housing, such as SWIFT 300 SWIFT or Hollows Quad, or in the case of seniors, you could choose to live off campus as well. So the quads, the quads including the quads on East Campus are really a strong source of, a source of strong residentially based communities. We're hoping that these are student driven. So through the through students joining quad councils, President, uh, student run events and creating traditions for among your peers in, your, in the halls. Um, we'll have great events such as the President's Quad Cup and Bricks of Stone and all sorts of different events over the course of the year. Um, we really want this to also think about a very vibrant community, right? Again, we don't want, we don't want the residential community and we don't want Duke Camp, Duke University to just be the place where you go to class and sleep, right? We really want you, we want to create a vibrant community that encourages um, community building for you to get to know your peers, know, get to know other staff members and folks at the university. But we also want to create a, We also want to create an environment where everybody automatically belongs. You don't have to be, once you're here at Duke University, you don't have to be selected into certain quads or houses. You automatically belong here at Duke University. And the goal really, and another goal really is to drive strong bonds among faculty, students and alumni. So again, um, once you're a quad member, you'll always be a quad member and you'll, ha you'll have opportunities to build connections with faculty and residents, with faculty fellows and others, alumni, staff, students and faculty over the course of your four years here at Duke University. 
So now we talked about where you live. Let's talk a little bit about how you'll live at Duke University. Uh, Quadex offers different programs and resources that will support your personal, your professional, your intellectual needs as you make your way through Duke, uh, regardless of whether you live in the quad or not. So when we think about our, the different folks that are gonna be here for you on campus, um, there are many different staff members that are gonna help you get, get your first year off to a great start. Um, you'll have resident assistants, which are undergraduate student leaders who really are, at re, are really those that day-to-day -day resource for all first year students and all residential students at Duke. Um, these act as resources, they, they, they act, um, they link, they can help link and connect students to other offices, other faculty, other members in the Duke community, but they also make sure that the communities in that, the community that you live in is, ma is maintained, it's safe, it's healthy. Um, part of that does mean enforcing community standards, but also making sure that your community is health and safety and clean as well at the same time. Um, we'll have graduate. Uh, we'll have graduate level program assistants, and these will be graduate level staff that will be in the residence halls. Um, they'll be another resource for students, and they'll be the ones that you'll want to connect with when you join us here at Duke. If you're interested in house counsel, once you get your house assignment, um, they'll also contribute um, and provide student leadership opportunities. Everyone loves a stu good student leadership opportunity to put on their resume for when they get ready to graduate. Um, so our program assistants will be leading a lot of these efforts. And then our residence coordinators are our full-time professional staff. Um, they traditionally have master's degrees in counseling or in higher education or education fields. And they really manage and supervise the entire community that you'll live in. Um, they'll supervise the RAs, the program assistants, and they'll really focus on community building, making sure facilities are um, well-maintained and helping respond to crisis situations. Also within the residence halls, you'll have faculty and residents. Um, these are faculty that live right alongside of you in the residence halls, and they'll also um, have a lot of events over the course of the year. Um, one of the great, one of the awesome things about the faculty and residents program is, is that they are that faculty member that can help you navigate and have figure out how to have conversations with the faculty members that you're going to have in your classes. Um, we really believe in that faculty and residence program because it really does help sort of break down the silos between the, fa the faculty and the in-classroom experience with and the, stu and the students, right? So um, they'll have different dinners and conversations. Sometimes the faculty and residents will have different field trips. That will be a lot of fun for you all to participate within your resident in your individual East Campus house. I'll talk a little bit about house and, house and East Campus Council. So each house on house council um, or each house on East Campus has its own house council. So think about your student government um, or similar organizations at your, in, in your current school. Um, and then we have the East Campus Council, which represents all, all, which represents all first year students on East Campus. So the East Campus Council kind of doubles as the first year class council. And then experiential orientation, which is a great way to kick off your Duke experience. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to Karina to talk a little bit more about that. Karina? Hi everyone. Again, my name is Karina Carpenter. I'm the Associate Director for Orientation here at Duke. Um, so we launched a new experiential orientation model last summer, and um, it's an opportunity to really get involved and get to know Duke in a different way. So when we think about orientation, um, a lot of schools do orientation of big sessions. You're sitting through a lot of presentations. You're getting a lot of really, really good info. Um, but at the end of it, you're kind of overwhelmed. You're like, what did I just do? How much information did I really obtain? Um, and did I really meet anyone sitting through all these sessions? So we shook up the model. We tried to figure out um, what, how can we help you get acclimated to the Duke community more and more so that when you do have questions arise or when you do have a, an interest in a resource or a need for a resource, um, you have folks, upperclassmen, current freshmen, um, staff members, faculty that you already know through your orientation experience that you can ask for help. Um, so the if you go to the next slide, Brandon, um, this is our new to Duke roadmap. So this will give you a picture of your orientation as it starts this summer. Um, so if you haven't heard of the Blue Book, it's your holy grail. Uh, and it's a website that goes live in May. 
and it'll be a um, everything that you need dates links um, a checklist everything that is the how to at Duke will be through your blue book. Um, the 2022 version is up right now if you're curious about what to kind of expect, um, but it's not updated yet for 2023 that comes out in May. So you can see over the summer, you're going to engage with us in um, the blue book. We're going to have um, webinars just like this on different content to cover before you even move in so that you're feeling more prepared. You have some resources with you. Um, we're also going to send you weekly emails to your Duke email. So this is my, my plug for you, set up your Duke email the second that you commit to Duke. That's going to be your number one tip and trick to make sure you get information quickly, um, especially the information that Brandon and I are about to mention at the end of this, which is your housing portal and your experiential orientation survey. Um, so there's pieces that are happening this summer. There's engagement over the summer. We're getting you ready. You're going to talk to your orientation leaders over the summer. You're going to hear from students. Um, then you're going to move in. And move in at Duke is one of the best traditions. Um, families, we're gonna have a family farewell session for you, which is a huge pep rally, um, an opportunity for you to actually like say goodbye to your student before they start their orientation experience the next day. And then experiential orientation happens. So students move in, orientation is the next six days that follow, and then classes start. Um, so you move in early, you're the only ones on campus as a class, minus your orientation leaders. And you'll get to know everyone. There's only 1,800 of you. So you'll get to know folks in your residence hall. You'll get to know a different population of students in your experiential orientation program, which are groups of around 80 to 120. And even through those groups, your orientation leader groups are smaller. Um, and so the point of experiential orientation is to get close and have a community of folks around you as you're exploring what Duke has to offer. After that, we'll have a ton of class traditions. Brandon already mentioned some like the class photo, bricks to stone. There's so much to look forward to of these huge traditions that Duke has been doing for years. And this class is a really cool opportunity because Duke Centennial is next year. So there will be celebrations galore to celebrate your opportunity of being a Duke student, which is really, really fun. Beyond that, there are so many other orientation weeks that help get you oriented. And that's what we say in our office, orientation is much, much longer than just the six days. You have time in the summer, you have time after that. It really does take a, a while to get acclimated to a new place. You're in a new space, you're trying new things. So we're not lying to you when we say, ex after experiential orientation, you'll know everything you need to know. You'll have made all your best friends and we've done our job. No, you'll still hang with us. We'll still, we'll still give you good information. We'll, we'll make sure that you're feeling good deep into your first semester and even your second semester at Duke. So let's talk a little bit about what some of our experiential orientation programs are. So you can see on the slide, we have 22 projects. So as a first year student, you will get sorted or matched into one of our 22 projects. And each project has their own unique theme. And it's through this theme that you'll be welcomed into Duke. And so, um, Students will take a matching survey to find their best fit program. And, um, and that'll be, happen over the summer. And you can read all about the projects. There's pictures and uh, descriptions and explanations of uh, what the groups did in years past. Um, and you'll see that in the blue book come May. And that's the little screen that says, hi, that's the opening of the blue book. So let's talk about what some of these groups are. And, in your experiential orientation, you'll do things like service in Durham, small group bonding, eating at local places downtown, doing campus tours, and so, so much more within your project's theme. And there's projects like Project Edge, which engages in innovation and creative problem solving uh, through activities like design sprint and pitch competitions, if that's your thing. There's groups like Project Wild that goes camping and backpacking for six days. There's Project Waves that takes students to learn about ecology and marine life at the Duke Marine Lab, which is located in Beaufort, South Carolina, North Carolina um, on the coast, about two hours away. Project Build does engagement with Duke's nonprofits and the Durham community. Uh, Project Farm to Table is a very popular one where students explore sustainable farming and practices and eat a lot of food while talking with local chefs. 
Um, and then Project Citizen, for example, explores policy, government, what it means to be a good citizen, and even has a trip to the Duke and DC program to visit their offices in space. So it, it, it's full of fun. We want you to meet a lot of folks in your orientation. And throughout it, you'll get to know a lot about the Duke community and all the opportunities Duke has to offer. In the evenings, you'll be sitting with your roommate. In the evenings, you might be hanging out in your common room and talking to someone else about their orientation program that they're doing, which might be drastically different from yours. And that's on purpose. We want you to talk and, and get to know folks and hear about what they're doing in their program and get some resources from them. And then they're gonna ask you too, right? And you'll be able to share your resources with them that you learned. And through that collective community building, um, that's how we'll make sure that everyone has the resources that we need to get started. So the next part is just gonna give us a little bit of an overview of really what is your next year at Duke gonna look like. The Quad X model is an intentional four-year model. As Brandon said, it's to make meaning of um, what are we really doing here, right? We're, we're not just going to class and going to sleep, but our living community is a space that's vibrant and that um, education happens there too. And so this map helps kind of paint the picture of what you can expect, right? Um, so in the summer, your housing application is going to go live. The experiential orientation survey is going to go live. Um, all of the roommates at Duke are randomly assigned, so you'll get your random assigned roommate, and as well as your housing assignment is randomly assigned too. Um, we'll then have experiential orientation. You'll meet your faculty, your FIR. Um, we'll have so many house council, quad council events, um, and that will kind of lead us through to the end of the semester. Um, but you can see that intertwined into these, there's also specific events for sophomores. There's specific events for juniors and for seniors. And so you're never done hitting milestones at Duke um, that are celebrated nonstop um, and celebrated within your quad community. So the folks that you live with your first year are gonna be folks that you live with throughout your three years of your live on requirement at Duke. And a lot of seniors, more than half of our seniors also choose to stay on campus during their time um, as seniors as well. Um, so there, it's an investment. You want to get to know folks around you. It's not saying you can't make friends outside of that. That's why you have an experiential orientation program that's outside of your residential community. We want you to get to know a lot of folks on campus. Um, but knowing who you're around, who you're living with for the next few years, there's a safety component in that. And there's hopefully a connection um, to that identity of what that quad means. There's special traditions of each quad. There's colors of each quad. There's different banners for each quad um, that you're immediately accepted into. Um, and don't even have to worry about kind of where am I living? Who am I going to connect with? My junior and in, in, in sophomore years, we're taking care of that for you. So what's next? This is a slide I think a lot of you are looking for. So this is the timeline. These are the dates. So at the by the end of May, the housing applications are due and the experiential match um, survey will be due. So those will open up in the beginning of May, again, to your Duke email. So it's gonna be critical that you look at your Duke email, not the email that you applied to Duke with, but your Duke email. Um, and so th the housing application, that's gonna help, help how I think find the best fit place for you on East Campus. Some of you have asked, I know about focus groups or about different scholarship programs. Um, you'll live together with that community um, in a space, in a dorm that best fits um, that community. So, um, right, so more information will kind of be coming out about that, um, but your preference will be then to that community and that's where you'll get placed. Um, and then your, your match survey will come out and that will help our office kind of figure out which, orient, which experiential orientation program is best fit for you. In mid-June, your housing assignment will be released. So that's when you'll be told what community you're a part of. Um, and then soon after that, your roommate will be assigned as well. So you can start reaching out, um, communicating with one another, get to, getting to know one another, uh, planning your room decorations, however, the, however you want to kind of look at that, who's bringing what, all that sorts of good stuff. And then in July, um, you'll be, there'll be information released for the house council. So if you're someone who's looking to get involved in that planning and that community development, um, there's president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, all sorts of uh, leadership position opportunities for each residential building, for each dorm. Um, if that's something that interests you, it's a great way to get involved right off the bat. 
also in mid-July, you'll be assigned your experiential orientation placement in your project. And then that's when your orientation leaders will start reaching out and you'll get more of an idea of what your unique schedule is for orientation. Finally, we've hit move-in. So in August, um, our move-in dates for the traditional move-in is August 19th. So if you're looking to book flights, that's the date. That's the big shebang. There'll be all the orientation leaders and RAs around campus helping you unpack your car. If you have not seen the videos on YouTube, please look them up. It's so much fun. It's just a high energy day. Um, you won't touch a thing to bring up to your room. Everyone will be welcoming to you and bring everything up those stairs for you. Um, if you're an international student looking to have a, a little bit more time on campus to adjust, um, the August 16th through 18th is available and more information will be coming to you from the DISC office or the Duke International Student Center um, soon. And then OEEC. So OEEC itself, like we said, you move in on the 19th. Right after that, the six days after is your orientation experience. Um, and then we have one weekend and then classes start. So you'll, you'll have so much to do, so much going on. If there's families on the call, this is also our time to say your student has a lot going on after move-in. So if you're booking flights home, if you're looking at when you're supposed to be heading out, it's, it's that morning of the 20th, um, right after that move-in. Uh, students will be busy for orientation week right after that. So get excited. There's a lot to look forward to um, and a lot of friends to start making. Awesome. Thank you, Karina and Brandon. That was so amazing. I myself actually learned a ton. Um, so that was really exciting. Um, there are a couple of questions um, that uh, I would like to just kind of flag real quick. Um, one is, um, how is community created in the, um, in the first year dorms when um, I think the concern is that there's so many people um, within the uh, residence hall. So maybe speak to some of the social events that are going on, um, icebreakers, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so when you think about the residential community, there are a lot of folks and different groups that are gonna be tasked with sort of helping you build that community. Um, even though you, when you think about the quads as 200, 400 some odd folks, um, you're going to be you're going to be broken up even within your individual houses. You'll be on our you'll have a floor community. Um, you'll have an RA that will whose primary one of their primary responsibilities is to help you build that community. Um, so they'll have a they'll have they'll host a lot of different programs and events that are geared towards not only getting you connected to the Duke community, but also geared towards helping you build networks and build connections with your neighbors on your floor. And then all the RAs in the building will help build um, will help do programming that helps you get to know folks. Um, within your building and within your quad X pair. Um, for those of you who are interested in house council, or even if you're not, um, there will be a house council who will be doing the same thing. And so they'll be doing a lot, they'll have a lot of fun programs as well that help sort of build that community in that, in that way. Um, so even though it may seem like, hey, I'm, there's 1700 some odd folks on East campus and how am I gonna build community? Um, there's gonna be multiple different ways in which you're gonna be able to connect with different pockets of folks through experiential orientation, through the residential um, experience, and even through student organizations. Um, but um, that's why we also have a lot of upper class students and graduate level students um, that are living in the halls alongside of you. So that way they can help you help facilitate some of those connections. And then I also want to flag a quick question um, about like, what is a house council and what does being a member entail? Um, I was on house council and when I were, I was on um, an undergrad and it was so much fun. Um, but maybe if you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so I was, the best way I can describe house council is if you are familiar with student government um, that might, you might have in your high school program or something like that. Um, it's, it's very similar, um, but this group is within your residential community. So once you are assigned to your house, um, you'll be able to run for house council and there's president, there's vice president, um, chair for academic initiatives, chair for social programming, um, and, the, and our East Campus Council liaison, right? And so these are, these are gonna be elected student, these are gonna be your peers, right? They're gonna be 
They're gonna run for house council. They're gonna be elected by you all to represent you all. Um, they'll, this group will also do some of those large scale programming based on some of the community needs and interests. And they're also an advocacy group. So there's things that are going on in your community um, that you want to advocate for, whether it's different common room furniture or tweaking quiet hours within reason, those kind of things. Um, your house council will sort of, uh, you can run for house council and they'll and that'll be a group that sort of does a lot of that programming and or advocacy within your own house. There's also a question um, about uh, student athletes. Um, there's a student athlete um, family on the line. So if you could maybe speak to like how their housing's done, I know they have a little bit of a different process, but there's a question about that. Great question. So um, student athletes, your housing, um, your housing will be more managed by your athletic team. So once you have accepted Duke and you're getting connected with your um, individual sports team, the athletics department will work more closely with our housing assignments office to assign you. Um, a lot of our teams, specifically, a lot of our larger teams um, are automatically assigned to a specific building. So basketball is automatically assigned to Wilson. Football is automatically in um, Trinity. Um, there are a handful of other sports that are automatically in Trinity. So there are um, certain buildings that um, the different athletic teams are automatically assigned to. And so you'll get, so, your, so that will be managed primarily through your athletic team and your athletic coaching staff. And then um, one question before we before we wrap up, maybe um, the different kinds of housing. Um, so um, we have hall style, suite style, um, also depending on what your year is. So um, maybe just a quick note about that. Sorry, I had to run to go get my charger. Um, so really on East Campus, the, the majority of the housing is gonna be sort of your traditional style housing. Um, so hallways with, um, with, a, with a row of rooms, public share bathrooms, um, common area study rooms, et cetera. Um, the only building that has suite style um, on for the first year campus is gonna be Wilson House. Wilson House. Um, and so they and, and most and the majority of those rooms are those suite style bath uh, suite style where you know you're sharing a little suite um, and it's just really two rooms that are together um, and you're and you're sharing your own bathroom with a pocket of students. Um, the, in terms of housing, different room types, do you do, we, with residence life we only have doubles and singles. Um, so majority of students, most, the majority of students will live in a double room. So that means you're going to be randomly paired with another roommate, like Karina mentioned earlier, um, and you're, you're sharing a space. Um, a lot of, and then some students will have a single space, um, which is, it means a room by themselves. Um, those are very, those are very, we normally prioritize students that have various um, accessibility needs for single spaces. And so um, those singles are a little bit harder to come by. So to sort of manage expectations. Um, I wouldn't necessarily automatically bank on getting into a single, but you know, um, but those are gonna be the predominantly two room types. Um, and having a, having a new roommate and this human that you can meet and begin your Duke experience with, that's a lot of fun. So I hope a lot of you are looking forward to having that random roommate because that could be, that could be your best friend for the next four years. And if not, that's fine, but you know, it, it, that's grounds of one place to start with making friends. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and wrap us up because we are a little bit over, but um, so many great questions. So Karina, um, Brandon, thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you for taking some time out of your afternoon. And of course, my colleague Dina in the background. Thank you so very much. Um, for all of those of you who might have more questions, um, you can definitely shoot any of us an email. Um, and then, of course, um, there will be more information coming along. Um, so the Blue Book is definitely um, the holy grail of information. And for those who matriculate, that comes out mid-May. So thank you so very much um, for spending your afternoon with us. And we hope to see you in Durham soon. Thank you so much.